It's All Things Considered, and I'm Dave Lawrence. We're concluding the latest guest in our Off the Road interview series, found on our mobile app and at hawaiipublicradio.org. Just look for the Off the Road banner on the right-hand column and subscribe to it on Apple and Spotify podcasts. And that includes part one with rock legends The Doors and drummer John Densmore, sharing stories from his new book, The Seekers, meetings with remarkable musicians and other artists. Ray Manzarek and Jim Morrison each have chapters. Um, the story of first meeting Ray Manzarek, the late great keyboardist of The Doors, in 1965, and then soon after going to his parents' house in Manhattan Beach. Yeah, well, I met Ray at a Maharishi meditation class. We were experimenting with then legal psychedelics, but we realized it's a little shattering on the nervous system. Meditation might be a more mellow route. And so Ray says to me at the meeting, I hear you're a drummer, you want to jam? And I'm like, yeah, I, I always want to play music. And so I go to his parents' garage in Manhattan Beach, and Jim uh, is over in the corner, and, and uh, Ray introduces him as the singer. Ray pulls me aside and says, uh, Jim's never sung, and he can't play any instrument, but... <laughs> But look at these uh, lyrics, and he hands me a crumpled piece of paper that reads, Day destroys the night, night divides the day. Tried to run, tried to hide, break on through to the other side. Whoa! Okay, I want to drum. Where's my drums? I want to get into this right away. You know, just magic. So he, he was shy, and, and his voice had not developed into a full baritone, but eventually it did. And had so many varieties of delivering, too. He really could sing in a lot of different ways. Um, when did you last see Jim and communicate with him? Uh, Jim was in Paris. We had finished L.A. Woman. It, it was released. And he called me. I didn't know it was going to be the last phone call. And um, I was the last door to talk to him. And he was curious about how... L.A. Woman was doing, and I said, oh, man, it, we're back. Uh, Lover Madly was a giant hit, and now they want to release Riders on the Storm as a second single. And he said, oh, man, cool. All right, so, you know, I'll be back eventually and uh, keep jamming, and, and we'll write some songs. And that was it. And when had you last seen him? Oh, gosh. Um, many months before that at our office and our rehearsal studio. And uh, he wanted to go to Paris and kind of get out of L.A. and rock and roll, uh, which was a good thought. You know, all these great artists went to Paris, Hemingway and all them in the 30s. The only problem is the French, and I love them for this, they have wine for breakfast, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Jim, uh, you know, unfortunately couldn't stop. Sort of goes with Jim's classic line from Roadhouse Blues. I woke up this morning and grabbed myself a beer. <laughs> That's funny, Dave. You're on it. Good. <laughs> Another guy you've interacted with, we learn about The Doors having Jerry Lee Lewis opening for The Doors at the L.A. Forum. All right. Well, let me back up even a little further, Dave. We wanted to give our tip of the hat to the 50s rockers who were the foundation of this music we were playing the Hollywood Bowl. We asked them, we'd like Johnny Cash to open up. And this was before the TV show. And uh, they said, he's a felon. No. <laughs> you know, he, he used to be in jail. No. I went, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Six months later, we're playing the forum, and now we have the power to dictate the second act. And we tell the promoters, we want Jerry Lee Lewis. And they say, well, okay, nobody's going to know who he is, but fine. And uh, we said, we don't care. And <laughs> he comes to the rehearsal. He has no instruments. He asks if they can borrow my drums. That's sure. They say to Robbie, can we borrow a guitar? <laughs> Robbie says, I, I got a lot of guitars. What kind? And Jerry Lee says to Robbie, any old Rock-A-Day Fender guitar. <laughs> and so... We encourage him to play some of his old rock hits because he was doing country music pretty much then. And some in the audience were going, Jim, Jim, during his set. And uh, he didn't care. And at the end, he got up on the piano and he said, for those of you who like me, God love you. For the rest of you, have a heart attack. <laughs> 
<laughs> the killer. Don't mess with the killer. <laughs> what a great gift to your audience, much like you were giving Bill Graham the huge credit that he deserves for introducing people to different bands by having these challenging lineups that would bring artists together from different genres. I guess it's Vancouver 1970, Albert King sitting in with you guys. An important moment for you too, I guess, having a hero like that on stage. Yeah, it was so important to Jim that he lit Albert's cigar for him backstage. He must have put a big smile on his face then, being the blues aficionado that he was. Exactly, Dave. It's kind of the, the, the thread through this whole book. It's real diverse, you know. I got, I got Willie. We're going to talk about Willie, obviously. That's the Hawaii connection. But yep. I got the conductor of the L.A. Philharmonic and, and reggae. Very eclectic. But all these people fed me artistically and influenced me. You mentioned him, and he's such a huge force, Willie Nelson, and it's the final chapter uh, in The Seekers from uh, legendary Doors drummer John Densmore. Even though you never say, Brother John, where this happened, obviously it happened on Maui, because you refer to him saying, I'm going to go see my kids playing at Charlie's, and I'm going, whoa, that's Charlie's in Paia. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep anonymity around, you know, but I, I, now my photograph is up on the wall behind the bar at Charlie's, so uh, it's over. <laughs> uh, let's see. The first time I went over, invited over to say hi, was in his poker room, and uh, I immediately said, Willie, listen, I'm a cheap high. Uh, uh, you can smoke for me or whatever. But anyway, he said... Uh, I'm going to go see my boys play tonight. Are you, are you coming down? Because I already had said yes to sitting in with Lucas and Micah, Micah. and Nelson. And then I thought, oh, my God, the, the giant icon's going to be there. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> you know. And uh, I was so pleased when I finished and I came backstage and I said to Willie, you know, your son chose the most difficult Doors song ever, L.A. Woman, <laughs> because of the tempo changes. And he said, oh, you made it through great. And that was it. I mean, you know, a guy like that saying that to me made me just, like, very happy, you know. Oh, I bet. As a final note, as we pick a song to wrap up our interview with. Well, you know, I, I kind of think that L.A. Woman <laughs> is the perfect driving song <laughs> do, 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 do. well i just got into town about an hour ago you know i took a look around see which way the wind blows it's uh, the trades are coming off uh, diamond head you know i love the feeling on that song if you're in the car you can kind of groove uh, and the tempo changes and and then it slows down and speeds back up. Uh, Mr. Mojo Risen, mm -hmm. uh, which is a sexual term from the blues, but that gave me the idea to say, hey, why don't we slow the whole thing down and then speed it back up, like being intimate with someone else. And uh, L.A. woman, you're my woman, my little L.A. woman. My na -da -da -da. Yeah. Can you remember the incubation of that? Yeah, good. Uh, Dave, we were jamming, and Jim starts singing, blew my mind. He's singing about the city, L.A., the city we live in, as a woman, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. The cops and cars, the topless bars, never saw a woman so alone. But you're my woman, my little L.A. woman. The song wasn't even a song yet. He was doing those words, and you were like, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. We got the riff, we were jamming, and then he started spouting out these words, and... Uh, City at night, city at night, you know, the beautiful kind of uh, love-hate lyrics about uh, where we uh, lived and wrote all our stuff. Well, there are so many ways to be inspired by the book. The Seekers, meetings with remarkable musicians and other artists from John Densmore, drummer for one of rock's all-time greatest bands, The Doors. And I really am grateful that you'd share all these stories with us. Really great interview, Dave. Just hoping that when and if this comes to an end, we can sometime connect in person. It would be wonderful to have you back on the show in that way. I'll see you in Honolulu, Brother Dave Lawrence. Please stay safe. You bet, Dave. And uh, if we're all safe, then we'll all be back together soon. Take care. Aloha, brother. Thanks, Dave. Aloha. Aloha.